This is a live presentation of the Thai Cats Audio Network. Are you ready? Thai Cats football is on the air. Touchdown, Tiger Cats! Caught it! It's a touchdown! Number 17, Luke Tasker, what a catch! Now the voice of the Tiger Cats. Here is RJ Broadhead with analyst Luke Tasker. Great to have you with us for the Hamilton Tiger Cats and the Montreal Alouettes. Second place on the line in the East Division. Montreal currently sits in second. The Tiger Cats two points behind. Tiger Cats have played one more game. They'll have a bye after this. The Alouettes are coming off of a bye. So the Alouettes with five wins, ten points. Tiger Cats with four wins, eight points. Coming into this game, Luke, the Tiger Cats have a little momentum, and maybe for the first time this season, they have a decisive win against a top-notch opponent, and how big of a factor is a win like that and momentum coming into probably the Tiger Cats' biggest game of the regular season to date? All year, they've been going on to the game field saying, boy, we got to fix that issue. Boy, we got to stop turning the ball over. we got to find a way to, to capitalize in the red zone. We've got to pick the ball off on defense. And all in one week, they they made changes in every single category I just mentioned and more of, of things they've struggled with that now all of a sudden they've proved to themselves and proved to CFL fans that they can make those plays, that they can throw for touchdowns and protect the football. And now they go to Montreal with a chance for, after everything they've been through, get themselves in a second place position in the East Division. It's an unbelievable uh, moment in this, in Orlando Steinhauer's Ticat team. I mean, there's there's weeks that we've through late summer where people were really wondering are they even going to be in contention when as we go into October and now they've got a real chance to to make a make a run for this thing so it we'll see it's going to depend again on them protecting the football tonight like they did uh, a week ago and getting it in the end zone yeah there's a really different feel for the tiger cats going into that bye at 3 and 9 it was pretty dismal Coming out with that big victory against Winnipeg to pick up their fourth win of the season. It was a great timing for that victory. For Montreal, it's an opportunity for them to really move ahead of the Tiger Cats and not let them catch. It's easy to look from a Tiger Cats perspective, but for Montreal, this is also a, a very big game to get the Tiger Cats a little bit off of their heels. Absolutely. If Montreal wins, they get two games ahead on Hamilton, and Hamilton looking to win and tie it up. So we'll have the coin toss and the kickoff coming up. It's the Tiger Cats visiting the Montreal Alouettes coming up next on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. It's a crisp, cool night in Montreal. 12 degrees, feels like 9. The wind gusting up to 33 kilometers per hour. Our referee tonight is Ben Major, and he is waiting at center field for the team captains for the coin toss. So it is a bit gusty, a bit chilly, but a lot on the line. Second place in the East Division. It's been a maligned East Division, uh, not getting a ton of respect in the CFL, but all of a sudden things are starting to even out with just a handful of games remaining. After this one, the Tiger Cats will only have four games left in the regular season. So they have to take advantage of all their opportunities. They're just awaiting a couple of kids to get to midfield to flip the coin. This is Hunter, he's gonna do the coin toss today, okay? This is the coin we're gonna use. The Alouette logo is tails, the league logo is heads. What's your call? Heads. Heads is a call. Okay, Hunter, flip the coin, please. Heads is a call. It's a tail, so you've won. You want, you want to receive now? Where do you want to kick from? Okay, switch sides, guys. Montreal is going to receive at this end. Have a good game, guys. Hold up. The Tiger Cats captains, Matt Schiltz, Gordon White, and Julian Hauser. Usually Dylan Wynn is there. Of course, Dylan Wynn is out of the lineup. He is injured, and that is just a, another one of the star players you can add to the list of Tiger Cats, 13 players who would in all likelihood be starting for the Tiger Cats on their injured list and Dylan went out Julian Hauser back getting pressure on Trevor Harris will be a key won't it Luke yes absolutely and uh, 
it seems like that's sort of the the going uh, strategy with Trevor Harris is try to get him to get rid of the ball quickly uh, or have to make something uh, you know outside the pocket happen. Um, talented quarterback, I mean, he's, he's led a number of, of, uh, of game-winning drives to come back from behind. He's got fourth, he's played well in the fourth quarter. He's, I have heard him been called a tie cat killer at one point. I mean, he does be, he does play well, but it's not his strength to have to make things happen on the move side to side. If you let him stay comfortable in the pocket, boy, he, he's the kind of, he's the kind of quarterback. He has the vision downfield to pick, to pick it apart. Well, the numbers would back you up on the fact that he does have success against the Tiger Cats. Last three games against Hamilton, 364 yards passing, 288 yards passing, 382 yards passing in that last game. That was a monster game for Trevor Harris. David Cote won it on an end-of-game field goal to give Montreal the victory. Eugene Lewis, the recipient of a lot of those passes, his last three games against the Tiger Cats, 127 yards receiving, 154 yards receiving, and 99 yards receiving, so just missing another 100-yard receiving game, but number 87 for Montreal will be front and center, as you would think will number 12 for Hamilton, Tim White, the sixth leading receiver in the CFL and the most targeted receiver he was big against Montreal in the last game but that was with Matt Schiltz at quarterback do you think Dane Evans will use Tim White as much as Matt Schiltz did last time against Montreal well Ticat fans sure hope that he does and give Tim White a chance to make those plays downfield um, uh, just put the ball in his hands uh, but one of the most impressive things that Dane Evans did last week against Winnipeg was spread it around to multiple receivers so the Tiger Cats are in all white. The Alouettes in all blue with the red trim. And this return game will be big for both teams, really. Montreal with Chandler Worthy got just across the 20-yard line on that kickoff. And the Tiger Cats special teams. The return, illegal block. Montreal number 20, bloc illegal, Montreal number 20. It's a 10-yard penalty, penalty de diverge. It's going to be first down. So an early penalty against Montreal, that'll push them back even more. Wow, unbelievable coverage job there. There was five Hamilton Tiger Cats in on that tackle all at the same time, led by David Unger. The third was the first man down to sort of stop the momentum of that return. That, and you're right, right at the 20, and you know how I, you know how I can't stand that <laughs> as an offensive player to march backwards and tough field position to start this game by the Alouettes. They all start on their own 15-yard line. Ball is right between the hash marks, a cool evening Ben Major just heading to where the ball is spotted so we're just getting underway the issue is the uh, first down markers <laughs> they they weren't on the field yet so you kind of need those they're tangled up in the storage <laughs> box still on the side <laughs> of the dust field. them off guys <laughs> So the chain is wrapped around the, the bottom of the, the markers, so they're getting organized just just after the kickoff to begin the game. Oh, great. <laughs> Newsflash, game time, 7.30 Eastern time. <laughs> so I think we're Here ready we now. Montreal from their own 15. Trevor Harris in the shotgun has three receivers to his left. Play action, he'll throw to his left, and that's Kayon Julian Grant, and a whole bunch of Tiger Cats over there, including Jovan Santos Knox, their leading tackler. He'll get a gain of a couple of yards. Rodney Randall Jr. playing the corner to the defensive right side of the field there. That was right in front of the Tiger Cats bench. That's just, that's a scripted first play of the game. They had a one receiver set on both sides, right and left, and Trevor Harris picked which one he liked better and gave a receiver a chance to make a play, but great open field tackle one-on-one. -on -one. Tiger Cats defense without Dylan Wynn, Simone Lawrence, Siante Evans, Tunde Adelike is in. He was a game time decision. Here's a second and five, Montreal from their own 20. There is a penalty marker. The pass is complete, but... The Tiger Cats are there immediately. Tyson Philpot made the catch. It'll be close, not to a first down, but to, to a short yardage decision, and no, they're gonna march off the field. Again, that was Rodney Randall Jr. there on the tackle, right, right again on his sidelines, right in front of his position at corner. 
And that's a great two and out for this Ticat defense to start off this game. Who, by the way, have the most forced two and outs in the CFL right now. And to start one off like that, backed up into, with Montreal backed up in their own territory, great job by this defense. Keep that well, momentum going, go. but it is short yardage. Dominic Davis is in under center, a little bit to his left, and he's trying to press to get across that 25-yard line. The Tiger Cats are saying that he's stopped. No indication from the officials yet. Tiger Cats are pretty confident. This would be a massive start for the Tiger Cats defense if Absolutely they huge. did stop Montreal here. Yep, they're gonna they're gonna move the chains, and it, it was close. And for a second there, there was they were showing their punt unit on the field, switched it up to short yardage, and kept the drive uh, going with a with a successful uh, quarterback sneak there. But boy, that was close, and and that that would that's an early uh, turnover to, uh, in a, an important game like this if the Ticats could have made that stop yeah they would have had it on the Montreal 25 yard line instead it's the Alouettes on their 25 with a fresh set of downs motion behind Trevor Harris it's Reggie White Jr. Eugene Lewis four receivers to the left it is a handoff and barreling up the Right side is Jeshwin Antwi. He'll get across the 35-yard line and should be a first down, and it is. Interesting. Four receivers set to Trevor Harris's left with no receiver left to the right side, and Jamal Roll, the cornerback for the Ticats, to that side come, came all the way across. So that's a really nearly unbalanced offensive look not quite but they ran the ball to that to that barren side with no receivers and and a nice cut up the middle for a great gain and we 11 yards for that first down for montreal alouettes haven't had a lot of success running against the tiger cats in the previous two games that's a good start for them that ball is tipped it was up in the air for a moment and it falls down incomplete lee Entry, i think might have been the tiger cat to get a touch on it yeah i think you're right most knockdowns in the CFL, this Ticat defense. It was, and it was Autry right in the middle there. And that, it's such a hard thing to do as those guys are fighting. It's hand-to-hand -hand combat down there right in the box as they're making a pass rush and to be able to disengage, you know, quickly enough to get a hand in the air. So now second and 10 for Montreal from their own 36. Trevor Harris looking left the whole time. Throws over the middle. It is complete. And it is Cam Kelly, who was on the back of Tyson legs, Philpott, young legs. who was uh, this is what battling you do. to you can't force it. You know, this is what the defense going to give you. Get give the you first throw. down. Cam Kelly's had a couple of big games against the Alouettes, has an interception in both games. Of course, leads the Tiger Cats in that category with five picks this season. So this will be... Another short yardage situation for Montreal. Third and inches from their own 46. They barely got one of these a couple of downs ago. Davis in again at quarterback. This time he goes straight ahead. Flags fly. He'll have enough for the first down, but we'll wait and see what these flags are for. Montreal, not. Outside, Hamilton, number 93, number 93, hors jeu. Penalty de Saint-Vers, five yard penalty, makes it a first down. Malik Carney, after the big game against Montreal, had the sack, the forced fumble, the recovery, the touchdown. He was eager to stop Montreal that time, didn't work. How about this? There's 10 minutes and 40 seconds left in the first quarter, and this mm -hmm. is the first drive of the game, and Montreal's still on, the, on their own side of the field. Great point. So four and a half minutes have gone by. The clock has barely stopped. Yeah. Montreal's gained about 25 yards. They'll keep it on the ground once again, and it'll be a minimal gain for the Alouettes. And they're still on their side of the field, and it's going to get, <laughs> you know, it's they're eating this first quarter away without almost somehow without a, a ton of productivity while at the same time keeping the ball in their hands. They're just, the ball's staying in play. It's not incomplete passes. It's just running up the field and and uh, and staying in bounds. And now here's their first sort of uh, challenge with a second and nine here. Walter Fletcher was the ball carrier who had that one yard gain. Empty backfield here for Trevor Harris. Throws to his left, it is complete. 
across midfield finally for Montreal and Eugene Lewis has his first reception of the night. Great tackle by Richard Leonard, who, who, Richard Leonard coming up to take out that space quickly and make an open field tackle. Like you said, an empty backfield there, four receivers to the left of Trevor Harris. Stopped well short of the first down mark. So Montreal takes close to six minutes off the clock in this opening quarter and got the ball to midfield. Now they will have to punt. 40 yard drive in six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, uh, you don't see that little yardage in that amount of time. David Ungerer catches it at his own 10. The punt from Joseph Zima. He gets to the outside. He's across the 25 to the 30. And it was Jeshwin Antwi, the running back for the Alouettes, who wasn't letting Ungerer get away. Got to almost the 30-yard line. There is a flag on the play. David Ungerer working in the return game. He was in on the tackle on the opening kickoff. We'll see him at, re at receiver. Just sort of a utility uh, uh, night for this Ticat uh, team. So the ball getting marched back. So the penalty will be on the Tiger Cats, and they are going quite a ways back. So that looks like the Tiger Cats will start the drive from their own five. We will be back with the first offensive possession for Hamilton when we return on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Great to have you with us. Tiger Cats in Montreal, the offense on the field for the first time. Dane Evans, after that great game against Winnipeg, let's see what he can do tonight against the Alouettes. Bad starting field position for the Tiger Cats. They're on their own five-yard line. Dane Evans from his own end zone completes the pass to Stephen Dunbar, Jr., and he'll get a gain of about three or four yards. Montreal started their drive with returning that kick with a penalty, backed him up, started with the wide receiver screen to the left. Hamilton got the punt, penalty backed him up, wide receiver screen to the left to start their drive. <laughs> and both to really not much success. This is a tough second down position for, for the Ticats. So Tiger Cats up to their own eight yard line. It's a second down and seven. Dane Evans, three receivers to his left. Looks right, now looks left, completes another one. And it is Tyler Turnowski back in the lineup after an injury. He gets across the 20, close to the 25. It's a Tiger Cats first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. <laughs> I know the feeling, Tyler. Early in the <laughs> game, he caught, he caught the ball. Great route, broke a tackle, but sort of just not ready to open it up into the sixth gear there and kind of tripped in the open field, but great play for a first down. I left that tripping part out, Luke. <laughs> oh, it's radio, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, he tripped, but it is a first down and the Tiger Cats- Still a great play. Yeah. Moved the ball up to their own 24. Dane's under pressure and he looks downfield. Tim White was down there, but the missed him. It goes incomplete, but that might have been more Living to see another down for the Tiger Cats as Dane Evans was under big time pressure. It was a little bit strange. It was sort of a, a naked rollout to Dane Evans' right, but it seemed to me like Tim White and another Ticat receiver right next to each other real deep, which is usually a sign of a mistake. You know, generally you're not going to have two guys in the same space 30 yards down the field. Uh, uh, who's to say, though? But either way, hard, tough second and 10 here. So still on their own 24, the Tiger Cats. The 10 yards to keep this drive going. Empty backfield for Dane Evans. He throws, and he's got Stephen Dunbar crossing over the middle. He's open. He gets to the 40, bounces over another tackle. A solid reception for Stephen Dunbar. A first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. Great reception. Broke a, broke a tackle to turn up field, and then decided to stay in bounds and left over cornerback Mike Jones for an extra handful of yards there. Great effort. That's two tough second downs that have been converted by Ticat wide receivers. Stephen Dunbar caught a couple of balls already from Dane Evans, 23 yards, and the Tiger Cats are starting to approach midfield. They're on their own 44. They'll keep it on the ground. It's a handoff to a Montreal native, Sean Thomas Erlington, and he carries the pack eight or nine yards. He'll be close to a first down. Great run. Sean Thomas Erlington ducking his 
pads, which are already pretty low to the ground. He's not, he's not the tallest <laughs> guy. And when he ducks them down, he is slippery and hard to tackle. Uh, great run there. Short yardage. Bain Evans, he will dive across midfield, and that will be good as the Tiger Cats keep it rolling with an active Green and Ross first down. Leading rusher in this game for the Tiger Cats is 20th in the CFL. That is Sean Thomas Erlington. Of course, Don Jackson is injured. Wes Hills has been used sparingly. Three receivers to both sides. Dane Evans had them do the waggle up to the line of scrimmage. They banked off the waggle again, empty backfield. Dane Evans takes a look to his right, throws to his left. It's complete. Pappy White, he's into Montreal territory, across the 50 and pushed out of bounds. Pappy White slow to get up on the sidelines there. Looks to me like a wind knocked out, you know, kind of thing. Hard to say. That was a really impressive job by Dane Evans. It was an empty backfield. Five-man protection, nobody else in there to help, and the pressure came in pretty quickly. Dane found his way all the way from the right side of the field to his check down on the far left in the flat, which was Pappy White on the sidelines. Seeing it again, I actually it looks to, like Pappy White got hit pretty, slammed into the ground pretty hard. That's always a tough, tough uh, position to be tackled in. So Pappy White will get looked at by the training staff. We will take a break. Tiger Cats with 5.09 to go in the opening quarter are moving the football. They're in Montreal territory. We'll be right back on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. In Montreal, a cool evening. Getting down to where it feels like about plus five or six degrees. Pappy White made a nice catch on the near sideline. He is was down, the training staff looked at him. He's heading to the Hamilton sideline now under his own power. Tiger Cats, by the way, again in all white with the black numbers, black helmets. They're going from right to left as we call this opening quarter action. This is just the second possession. Montreal had an opening drive and now the Tiger Cats in almost 10 minutes have evaporated off the clock in this opening quarter. No points to show for it, but this is a pretty good drive, Luke. Hamilton started on their own five, and now they're in Montreal territory. Yeah, tough to start backed up like that. They've also overcome a couple difficult second down situations, and now they're looking at a favorable one with second and three across midfield. It's kind of what we talked about. Trevor Harris did a fine job, dr job driving down the field, and now it's Dane Evans' turn to, to do the same as he marches back. Second and two. Hamilton on the Montreal 47-yard line. Play action to Wes Hills, the throw, it's low to wow. Tim White. He dives, he made the catch, and he is right near that first down marker. Now Tim White is down. So first Pappy White on the previous down, and now Tim White. And he's four yards away from exactly where Pappy White was just laying on the field, yeah. right in that same spot, and it looked to me, I think it's the same with him. I think he, I think he hit the ground pretty hard with his helmet almost on the second time there, and We'll see as they're coming out to, to look at him. He, he's he's talk, speaking with Dane Evans is right next to him on the ground there, but hard tackle in sort of an awkward position. Unbelievable job by Dane Evans to get that ball out there uh, on that throw. He was backing up and found him very, very quickly and in a hurry, but Tim White, the most receptions in the CFL of any receiver right now and on pace for to break 100 receptions in the year but really, really struggling on the field right now. This is a bit devastating for the Tiger Cats. Opening drive and two receivers have been injured. We'll take another break with 4.38 to go in the opening quarter. Tiger Cats still have the ball. We'll continue this drive when we continue the broadcast on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Hi, this is Dylan Wynn, number 98, your defensive tackle for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And we're back to the Hamilton Tiger Cat Audio Network. Dylan Wade injured, so not playing for the Tiger Cats tonight. Good to have you with us, RJ Broadhead with Luke Tasker. It was an incomplete pass to Tim White, so it makes it a third and three here for the Tiger Cats, so they will punt. Michael Damagala is on the field. The more pressing issue are the injuries to receivers. Happy White and Tim White both down on the field during that drive. The only backup receiver listed on the depth chart is David Ungerer. 
So Damagala will bounce this at the 20. It'll roll almost to the 10. Chandler Worthy, not a lot of room to work. The special teams knew how dangerous Worthy is. And Keandre Smith, the youngest player on the Tiger Cats, the receiver making the tackle on Worthy. Good coverage again. Right by the Montreal 15 is where they're going to start this. And boy, on one set of downs, Pappy White and Tim White both have to have to be attended to on the field. And, and we don't know any statuses right now, but that is, that's going to be an interesting storyline and difficult to overcome for the Ticats offense. Luke Tasker, how close are you to being in game shape? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, how, how good does 10 push-ups a week get you? Is that, yeah. right? Does that count as in shape? Yeah, I might want to push that to 50. <laughs> Just under four minutes to go, opening quarter. Second possession for the Alouettes. There's no score in this football game. Second place up for grabs in the East Division. Julian Grant with a catch, and he tried to progress, but Julian Hauser had him by the waist, wouldn't let him go, and then the reinforcements came in and push Julian Grant back, but there is a flag. It's Richard Leonard. Face got mask. Uh, avoir attrapé le protecteur facial. Hamilton, numéro 23, number 23. Connected 15 verge, 15 yard penalty. First down for Montreal. So Richard Leonard, and he knew it right away. As Julian Grant kind of ducked to get underneath tackles Richard Leonard's face or hand gets him right in the face but he quickly releases and re-grips and just they're going to just call it every time if they see fingers get intertwined in the face mask and that is unfortunate because that was going to be a great defensive stop there. That'll move Montreal up to their own 30 yard line with three and a half to go in the opening quarter. Handoff is fake to Walter Fletcher. The pass is complete to Cheshwin Entwi. So both running backs were in the game for the Alouettes, and Antwi makes the catch, and he gets across the 35-yard line. Not only has there not been a deep reception by a Montreal receiver, there has, there's barely been a route past 10 yards. This is wide receiver screens and crossing routes is really all that they've, they're even attempting in the pass game so far in the first quarter. And Trevor Harris is 5 for 6, 27 yards. Second offensive possession for Montreal, still waiting for the first score in this football game. Opening quarter, Tiger Cats have allowed the least points to their opponents. Another handoff here, this time to Antwi, and he will get a gain of a couple, but Montreal might be in another short yardage situation here on third down. They had a couple of those on their opening drive. Both of these teams really are near the bottom of the league as far as run game production. But really, it's been a run heavy game, especially for Montreal. But even Hamilton has not been past throwing the ball really downfield. It's more of that, you know, run game by, you know, wide receiver screens and stuff, you know, which is, of course, not a run game. But in a sense, in the CFL, the, 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 the short passing game to receivers kind of adds into that to that running effort. And here's another short yardage attempt. Dominic Davis, second drive of the game, third time he's been into the game. And another battle to get the extra yards, but he does get the first down and a little bit of pushing and shoving. After that, as these two East Division rivals start to heat things up, but Montreal keeps this drive going. It was Jovan Santos Knox dragging him out of the pile there to, to finally end the play, but Montreal is perfect on their short yardage attempts. That's a pretty good stat to have. So Danny Machocha not afraid to go for it. He's had to go for three third down short yardage and has been successful on all of them in this opening quarter just over a minute to go in the first quarter Trevor Harris back in play action takes a look to his left throwing deep looking for the receiver over there who was Eugene Lewis but Jamal Roll terrific coverage the ball goes incomplete Jamal Roll missing for notably from the lineup in the last match up with Montreal and that was tight tight coverage there and exactly what you want from your playmaker in the secondary that was an attempted double move by Eugene Lewis and and, and Jamal Roll was having none of it Jamal Roll one of the stars on this Tiger Cats defense and you just 
knew coming into this game he would accept that challenge of keeping an eye on Eugene Lewis, who has really eaten up the Tiger Cats. Second and 10 here for Montreal from their own 43. Trevor Harris pump fakes that he throws. It's low and incomplete again intended for Lewis. And Tunde Adelike was right there. So a couple of incompletions thrown by Trevor Harris, and that will force Montreal to punt. Harris ended up on the ground right after getting rid of that ball, and, and th that's the kind of pressure you have to get. That, that was a really, he couldn't get enough on that. That was too short, not really a catchable ball, and that comes from that pressure, forcing him to get it out a little quicker than he comfortably can. Those are really the first two downfield attempts, and both, both fell incomplete. Joseph Zima on to punt again. Still, Hamilton and Montreal, 0-0. Very late in the opening quarter now. David Ungerer, he'll be back to return this kick. We might see him in as a receiver. Uh-oh, David Ungerer has fumbled it, and he jumps on it right away. Tyrese Beverett, the leading special teams tackler for the Alouettes, and former Tiger Cat was there, but Ungerer was quick to pounce on it. Tiger Cats keep possession, and Dane Evans comes back on the field. 0-0 between Montreal and Hamilton. We'll be right back on the Tiger Cats audio network. Late in the opening quarter, R.J. brought in Luke Tasker, Tiger Cats, and Alouettes. It's been a defensive battle. No score yet in this big game for both teams. Montreal currently in second place in the East Division. Tiger Cats two points behind. Tiger Cats have played an extra game. They'll be on a bye week next week. Another big game coming up on Saturday between Toronto and Ottawa. Big game in the East Division, so... You know, the Red Blacks are trying to stay in this playoff race, and they believe that they can, and Toronto would like to get this first place in the East Division locked down. Yeah, if you're a Ticat fan, you almost want Toronto to beat Ottawa and keep that as a low-scoring team, and then, of course, you got to beat Montreal to, to give yourself a second-place chance, but a lot, a lot of things working, especially if Hamilton and Ottawa get a win. It's a very interesting division. Quickly with those injuries, Tim White is back in the ballgame. David Ungerer in for Pappy White. Play action to Wes Hills. It's another completion to Stephen Dunbar. Stiff's arm, stiff arms his man. Gets across the 30, almost to the 35-yard line, and that will be very close to a first down. Twice tonight, Stephen Dunbar Jr. catching a, a, a short pass sort of out to the flat there and then, and then breaking or nearly breaking a tackle for extra yardage and impressive effort there. Second and inches here for the Tiger Cats is they're on their own 34-yard line. This will be the final play of the opening quarter. And diving across the 35-yard line is Dane Evans. Dane doing it all so far, 5 for 7, 57 yards in the opening quarter. But Montreal and Hamilton with a lot on the line tonight on a chilly evening in Montreal. But the score is 0-0. Second quarter action is coming up on the Ty Cats Audio Network. This is Courtney Steven. And this is Mike Daly. Now back to Luke and RJ. On the Ty Cats Audio Network. Game day on the Ty Cats Audio Network with Courtney and Mike. Every game day prior to the game, they will break down all the storylines. Of course, Luke and I have Ty Cats this week, the day before the game. Lots of content on the Ticats Audio Network. So here we are in Montreal, 0-0 between the Alouettes and the Tiger Cats. First and 10 here for the Tiger Cats from their own 36. It's a Wes Hills sighting, his first run of the game. He'll get across the 40-yard line. Really impactful last week against Winnipeg. Wes Hills both running and in the pass protection, and I'm sure that we're going to see more of that. That first quarter, this is the fourth drive of the game here, and we're beginning the second quarter. Really. <laughs> Interesting, you know, a lot of running, a lot of a lot of short passes that stay complete and inbounds, and, and here we are, and we're already cruising along in this game, RJ. First time this season, Luke, that the Tiger Cats have been in a scoreless game after the first quarter. Here's Wes Hills again. He had six yards on his first carry. He runs to his left, gets to the outside. He crosses the 50. It's a first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. Chris Ackey on the tackle there, and you thought for a second, you know, that, that stiff arm from West Hills is a powerful, yes. <laughs> powerful move there. 6'1", really 218 run. pounds. Chris Hackey, though, really great job in the open field. <laughs> that was almost more of a 
an open hand punch. <laughs> <laughs> that's really what it is. Those guys, if the guys can time it up well, that's exactly what a stiff arm is. So Dane Evans has Sean Thomas Erlington beside him. A little play action there, throws to his left. It's complete to Tim White, leads the team in yards after catch, and he got to midfield. Wes Sutton, the Montreal Alouette's leading tackler, was in on bringing Tim White down. It's really, it's really interesting. It's like um, we're, we're looking at two mirrored offenses right now. We've had an unbelievable amount of wide receiver screens in this first half. And it's just like we like we talked about a drive goal. It's an extension of the run game. It's just a must have. You got to get that five yards. And but we've seen a really uh, a large amount from both teams. And neither team has been much over midfield. Tiger Cats on the Montreal 54 for a second and four. It is caught and getting to the 50 was David Ungerer and he thought he had enough for the first down. I don't think he likes the spot. And they're going to mark him a little short. No, they're not. It is a first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. Yeah, they gave it to him, and that was a great job uh, by David Unger to get that the de all the depth on that route before hooking up to get in phase with Dane Evans. And right at the catch, as he got contact, he had already you know gained the yards needed, and that's just that's what you have to do in that under coverage as a Savvy, you know, uh, move the chains guy, and that's that's definitely his job in this offense right now. Dane Evans back to pass, throwing deep down the near sideline. It's caught. Tim White hangs onto it with Nafis Lyon trying to pull the ball loose, but it is a critical catch for Tim White. Tiger Cats are down to the Montreal 12. It's a first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. Well. There we go. That's how you bust open the passing game after after a short pass after a short pass. And you give your guy, your playmaker, a chance to get one downfield, perfectly thrown ball. Kind of a little bit of contact in the release for Tim White, but his speed got him the upper the high shoulder, and that ball was right on the money for a huge gain. 38 yards on that catch by Tim White, and he's having another good start against Montreal. Hand off to Wes Hills. He goes right up the middle. There was an opening, and now Lewitz closed that gap just in time, stopping Wes Hills at about the Montreal four or five yard line. This is just a great offensive position to be in here. You've got second and two on the four yard line. You can still gain a first down. You've got everything. You've got a 20 yard deep end zone here. Montreal does have the, the clipped corners in the end zone. The ball's on the Montreal four. It's a second and two. Another handoff to Wes Hills. Couple Alouettes got touches on him. They can't bring him down. It's a touchdown. Wes Hills, Tiger Cats lead. Wes Hills running it in from four yards out. That touchdown was driven by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. We've said it so many times, Luke, about Wes Hills. It takes more than one player to bring him down, and you're not taking him down with an arm tackle. That's right. No, and there was there was three chances at an arm tackle, but uh, nothing that nothing that took there. Great strong run right off the right side of the. Ticat formation, that was another five minute drive, four and a half minute drive, just, just pushing down the field, one huge explosive play. Really impressive by the Ticat offense. Tiger Cats have scored in the second quarter in 13 straight games. And speaking of consecutive, Seth Small hits his 21st consecutive convert and the Tiger Cats early in the second quarter have the lead, it's seven nothing. Hamilton in Montreal. We'll be right back on the Ticats Audio Network. This is the caretaker Bob Young of the Hamilton Tiger Cats now back to Luke and RJ on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Thank you very much, caretaker, and you know he's happy with that start for the Tiger Cats. Seven nothing as Wes Hills gets his first CFL touchdown and gives the Tiger Cats the lead. Michael Domagala on the kickoff. Chandler Worthy picks it up at his own 10, gets running off to his right between the numbers and the sideline, and he will cross the 30-yard line. And again, the Tiger Cats special teams is doing a good job against a very dangerous returner of Montreal so far. Yeah, good coverage again. This is Montreal's best starting field position of the, of the game so far, and that's their own 31-yard line. Trevor Harris 
looking to answer off of a great Dane Evans drive. So Montreal starting from their own 31. Ball on the far hash mark. Trevor Harris hands off to Jeshwin Antwi. And Montreal trying desperately to establish the run game against the Tiger Cats, but the Cats have the best run defense in the CFL, and they don't give Antwi much on that run. I am a little surprised, and we, uh, like we were just saying, there's a lot of short passing and, and uh, you know, outside passing to the flats, to the screens from both teams, and, you know, Dane Evans takes a shot and opens it up, and I've got to believe we're going to see Trevor Harris start throwing this down the field soon. You cannot run the ball all the way through the night to victory against the Ticat defense, and honestly, especially not Montreal's run game. Well, Trevor Harris has had so much success passing against Hamilton. This is a second and seven. Montreal from their own 34. Hergie Mayala makes the catch, but Richard Leonard is there immediately to make the tackle. And Mayala is just a little short of the first down, I believe. Another short yardage here for Montreal. Yeah, I, I, that's just that's just kind of good football all around. It was cover zero, full blitz, seven man blitz. Trevor Harris sees it, finds his matchup on the hitch that he likes. And at the same time as it's a great catch, it's also a really good tackle by Richard Leonard coming up. Could have played it, you hoped, just a little bit more aggressive, but it's a catch and an immediate tackle. Montreal 0 for 6 in this football game on second down conversions. Dominic Davis coming in again. They've been much better on the third and short. And again, the Tiger Cats are indicating that he didn't get it. We'll see where this ball is spotted. And it is enough for a first down, but again, not by much. I think that's a fourth short yardage, right? Yeah, it is. For, uh, for Montreal. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's getting his work in out there, and, and they have converted each one of them. But Ticats, uh, you know, great, great second down uh, efficiency. They're forcing that issue uh, uh, time and again. So just enough for Montreal to keep this drive going. They're now up to their own 41-yard line. Ball in the middle of the field. Under the lights in Montreal. Trevor Harris with some time. Stays in the pocket. Throws over the middle. It's complete. A large gain here for Montreal. Jake Winicky makes the catch. And Montreal is inside the Hamilton 40. The deepest they've been in Hamilton territory in this football game. Well, what did we say? You can't just... You can't just plug away at it with runs and short passes and we knew you, you, Trevor Harris has got to open it up a little bit underthrown actually made Jack, Jake Winicky work to, to scoop that one up really clean catch though and here they go now they've thrown their strike down the field and are moving into scoring territory great catch by Winicky no doubt about it that it was a completion had to dive but had his hands under the ball the whole time and off to Walter Fletcher and Richard Leonard jumps into the backfield, slows Fletcher down, gets a little help by Diallo to bring down the running back, but Richard Leonard read that perfectly. He did, and I, I was surprised to see that that small uh, 23 jersey and <laughs> white, you know, all of a sudden explode out of the middle of the of the defensive rush. He blitzed from his halfback position and really was on to that to that run uh, off to Trevor Harris's right. Great open field tackle in the backfield. Richard Leonard, the shortest player on the Tiger Cats, according to the statistics. That's a loss of two for Montreal. So now second and 12, they have not been good on second downs. Haven't converted any yet. This is complete to Keon Julian Grant, and he gets into that Hamilton secondary. He will cross the 25-yard line, and that is a second down conversion on second and long for Montreal. They showed pressure at the start of that, as that play set up. And they dropped out of it, four-man rush. Jamal Roll was sort of in a strange position at a low zone player, but not out to the flat. And I don't know, that looked too easy for Trevor Harris. He's just picking his man in the open low coverage and, and, and letting him yards after the catch his way to the first down. Four receivers to the wide side of the field. That's to the left of Harris, and he throws to his right. Eugene Lewis had Jamal Roll all over him. Roll knocked the ball away, and it is incomplete. Reggie White, Eugene Lewis setting up for, a, you know, one-man blocking for that wide receiver screen, and Jamal Roll just blows the whole thing up. He took on the block by Reggie White and then stuck a hand out to break up the pass to Eugene Lewis, that's just, that is dominant play from his cornerback position. 
Luke, we talked about Eugene Lewis and how effective he's been against the Tiger Cats. He has caught one of four targets in this game for three yards. So Jamal Roll doing his job. Terrible snap. It's rolled to Trevor Harris. So all he can do is jump on that football before the Tiger Cats got there. And Harris was able to keep it in Montreal's possession. But an awful snap. Huge loss of yards, and David Cote takes the field saying, what in the world, guys? I, <laughs> You know, I, it was an easy field goal. Now there's a little bit more uh, work for me to do at 41 yards now. It would have been a, would have been something like a 35-yard field goal. Cover zero pressure, and, and that's hard. When that center's got all that pressure looking right down, right down on him, mishap on the snap. Loss of nine, so this will be a 41-yard field goal attempt. Montreal trying to get on the board, the snap, the hold, the kick, and Cote is good from 41 yards out. And the Alouettes close the gap. The Tiger Cats still lead, though, in the second quarter with 5.03 remaining. It's 7-3. Hamilton will be right back on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Well, that chant was probably heard a few times at McGibbon's Irish Pub today on Boulevard Saint Laurent in Montreal. A whole bunch of Tiger Cats fans were there getting warmed up for a cool night at Molson Stadium. Tiger Cats fans travel well, and the Tiger Cats lead the football game. So, so far, those fans are happy. Tiger Cats start this drive from their own 40, a screen to Wes Hills, and the Alouettes sniff that out immediately. Micah Awe was there to make the tackle. So well executed in the backfield for that screen. Dane Evans with a really patient, savvy fake there, sort of fake reverse, fake the play action to Wes Hill, who was set up for the screen to the right, but the Montreal rush uh, somehow knew exactly what was going on. They, they were not faked by Dane Evans uh, uh, play action there whatsoever, and that's a that's a tackle for a loss. Tiger Cats, six for seven on second down conversions. This is a tough one, though. It's second and 15 now from their own 35. Dane Evans back to pass, throws to his right. It's complete to David Ungerer. Needed to get to the 50, though, for the first down, and he's well short, just across the 40, maybe to the 42 or 43, so the Tiger Cats will have to punt, leading the football game 7-3. to three. Getting close to the three-minute warning. Three minutes, 35 seconds. The clock is running. Michael Damagala didn't see a lot of him against Winnipeg. Didn't have to punt very much. A couple of punts here so far tonight. Damagala letting the Clock wind down, 4-3, now the snap, it's a high snap, but Donald Gala jumps up, gets it, and kicks off to his left. That'll send Worthy back to his own 21. Runs to the hash mark, now back out to the numbers. Malik Carney hot on his heels, and Felix Garon Gauthier and Gordon White both right there to force Chandler Worthy out of bounds right in front of his own sideline. So 3.07 to go. We are close to the three-minute warning. We'll take a break. The Tiger Cats are leading in Montreal. It's 7-3. to three. We'll be right back on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Back in Montreal, the Tiger Cats are leading the Alouettes 7-3. to three. RJ Broadhead with Luke Tasker, and we are getting close to halftime. This will be the final play before the three-minute warning. Alouettes have the football, and they are on their own 27-yard line. And the uh, flags fly as that ball was snapped. Number 62, number 62. It's a five-yard penalty. Penalty de saint -Ange. We'll replay first down. And we're now at the three-minute warning. So Montreal's last couple of offensive possessions have been for a loss. This one due to a penalty, so that'll push them back. We're at the three-minute warning, 2.53 to go in the opening half. Tiger Cats lead the Alouettes 7-3. We'll be right back with the finish of the opening half on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. We want to thank all of our listeners on the Tiger Cats Audio Network and especially those who are emailing in, letting us know where you're listening from. Sean McKay and Listowel, hope you're doing well, Sean. Dan in Calgary, always great to have people out west listening. And Scott Pettigrew in Halifax. And uh, Scott, glad you're listening and hope everything is going okay there, of course, with 
Hurricane Fiona approaching Halifax. We are certainly thinking of everybody on the East Coast. Two minutes, 47 seconds. The clock is running. Montreal in their own end and their own 22-yard line. It's a first and 15. Keon Julian Grant makes the catch, and he will get across the 30, close to the 35-yard line. That'll put a dent into what Montreal needed for that first down. They've got uh, two or three yards to go now on second down. See, this is what I mean when, I, when Trevor Harris He's just really, really great vision down the field. He's got that veteran ability to see things develop, and he let that ball go right at Richard Leonard. But he knew, but Richard Leonard's in zone. He's got his back turned to him, and he he knows that he can't make a play on that ball. Confidence. Trevor Harris looks to his left again. High pass. Reggie White Jr. elevated, got a hand on it, couldn't haul it in. It's incomplete. So now it's third and four for Montreal, and they've had a few short yardage quarterback keepers by Dominic Davis, but this one a little too far at four yards, and Joseph Zima will come on to punt. A little bit of back and forth now, shorter drives where this game started off with just both teams plodding their way down the field, and now it's sort of a punting battle as we, get, as we close in on halftime. David Ungerer was listed as the returner for the Tiger Cats, but the injury to Pappy White, and he is a starting receiver now as well. Ungerer back to return this punt, just inside his own 30, between the sideline and the numbers, trying to get through that wave of Alouettes. Can't get too far, he'll get across the 35-yard line, but there is a flag. Referee tonight is Ben Major. Once again, that's the second time tonight. Second time tonight that Hamilton's marched backwards. After that return, and with not much time left to move the ball down the field, that's a, that hurts at 10 yards, and that's back from the point where David Unger caught the ball at his own 29-yard line, so all the way back to the 19, and oh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't get over it. I if can't you can get only over see it. Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever that happens, I, it, it, that 10 yards feels like you have to walk a half mile backwards. Yes, I, I, I feel it. <laughs> After two seasons with you, Luke. You I, know. I, yes. I know. And this is Wes Hills, and that's his least productive run in a couple of games. The Alouettes stop him with a very minimal gain, if any. Again, they find themselves in a tough, tough second down position. You know the 19 year it's not 19 year is not all not really backed up backed up but even when you're in anytime you're inside your own 20 you're really just trying to give yourself some breathing room you want to just get one first down but that conservative mindset and that you know that you know you like more likely in this second and 12 here and it's hard to get out of there tiger catch lead seven to three david underer he breaks a tackle he'll dive across the 30 yard line and the Tiger Cats needed to get to the 29, so that is enough for a first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling, and it's been a productive first half for David Unger. Yeah, and really just really impressive job by David Unger. You thought Raheem Wilson was going to make that tackle, and David Unger snuck through to make that difficult 12-yard gain for first. Ball on the ground again to Wes Hills. This is a better run, and he barrels his way across the 40. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling with another active Green and Ross first down. They've taken 45 seconds away uh, with this drive at the end of the, the half here on their own 42, RJ. They've got to get... Uh, it's, they've still got at least a good 20 yards to go to get into field goal range here in the last minute of the half. There was a minute 45 on the clock. It was a big second down conversion to David Ungerer. Now there's under a minute to go in the opening half. Tiger Cats lead 7-3. to three. Dane Evans stays in the pocket, has to sidestep to his left, and Tim White finds an opening and makes the catch. It's another first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. You know, I thought I thought maybe Dane had escaped that pocket really before he needed to. It was a really great protection. But after he escaped to his left, he <laughs> regained his balance and kept his eyes downfield for a great connection with Tim White. Now right at midfield. Clock still running, 35 seconds. Another 
reception by Tim White. He's open and trying to get those yards after the catch, but the sure tackling of Wes Sutton brings him down. He'll be very close to another first down. I, I think they're going to call that in bounds. They are, and so this clock's going to start right now as they set the football. Tim White really should have gotten out of bounds there, and you know they're 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 going to get into field goal range here. But every second you save is a chance for you to keep moving that ball, guarantee your field goal distance, potentially get a touchdown. Uh, Got to get out there. Dane is hot right now. He's completed his last nine passes. Backs up to midfield, throws over the middle. It's another completion. It was a bullet of a pass hauled in by Tyler Turnowski. And he is down at the 25-yard line of Montreal with 12 seconds to go in the opening half. Wow, what a, what a laser Dane Evans just zipped in across the middle, just over the linebacker's reach. Unbelievable pass, great end of the half drive right there. That's really promising and now, now lining up for their field goal, uh, which will be the last play of the half. Seth Small has hit 20 of 23 this season, 87%. This one will be a 32-yard attempt. Matt Schultz is the holder, the snap. Schultz gets it down, the kick by Seth Small is good. So Small has now hit his last three field goals in a row. This is first tonight with no time left on the clock. It is a good finish to the opening half for the Tiger Cats. That Seth Small field goal gives them a 10-3 lead at the half loop. Yeah, and that was a great job to, to make something happen with the time he had left at the end of the, of the second quarter. Dane Evans, I'm impressed. It's not an overly aggressive play call, I wouldn't say. They're moving the ball well, and West Hills is running is running the ball well, too. But the times that Dane has moved the ball downfield in larger chunks and bigger passes, it's looked, it's looked great. He's really throwing it on time. He's keeping his eyes down the field. I think the Hamilton protection has also been very impressive. We'll see. Trevor Harris is going to come back with his own uh, uh, plays to make in the second half. Tyler Tarnowski with a huge, not just the 88, there's something very David Stala about Tyler <laughs> Tarnowski. The way he runs, everything about it. Of course, the 88, I mean, it's just really, uh, really cool to see him make that catch there. Back and the, in the, lineup. the sticky hands like sticky. Dave Stala. <laughs> Dave Evans on a real hot streak heading into the half, completed his last 10 passes. Wes Hills, the lone touchdown is first as a Tiger Cat, and Tiger Cats lead 10-3 at the half. Tiger Cats at the half with Bubba O'Neill and Andy Fantuz is next on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. This is the Tiger Cats Audio Network. 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 Tiger Cats with a 10-3 lead as we get set to start the second half. RJ Broadhead with Luke Tasker. Quarter number three, it's the Tiger Cats' lowest scoring quarter and they've won the third quarter three times this season last game against winnipeg and the previous two games against montreal so the third quarter has been good for hamilton against the alouettes statistically different against montreal less yes. turnovers and winning third quarters and <laughs> you know right now this lead it's, there's something about it feels different from the other leads they've had throughout the season they're they're playing you know just good sound football even though it's just a seven point lead their their dane evans is really kind of following up on that winnipeg uh success and he'll bring a hot streak into this second half. Tim White on the kickoff started off to his left and cut back to his right. He'll get across the 30, just be a little bit short of the 35-yard line. And Dane Evans coming on the field. He has completed his last 10 passes in a row. So Dane Evans, we were wondering how he would respond after that great game against Winnipeg. So far, so good. 14 for 16 for 163 yards. Has not thrown a touchdown or an interception. Wes Hills has the lone touchdown for Hamilton. He had 37 yards rushing in that opening quarter. Empty backfield for Dane Evans. Three receivers both to the right and left. The ball is right between the hash marks as the Tiger Cats and all white go from left to right. Dane Evans has now completed 11 straight and he's been using David Ungerer a lot. That's his fourth catch and he's up near midfield. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling with an active Green and Ross first down. Really great job by David Ungerer to get to that space over top of the ball. He was 15 yards and then really, really settling down. He knew he was right where he was supposed to be. Good completion. 
Ball sent ahead on West Hills, and he won't get much there as Montreal was pretty good stopping the run that time. How about this, RJ? In the first half, there were only 10 plays by both teams on the opponent's side of the field. Wow. Everything happened back in their own ends, and those a couple big explosive plays to get down on the on the drives that did uh, uh, score points, but really just a back and forth, and, and, a, and maybe you could call it a conservative uh, play call on both teams. Yeah, the defenses were strong. Montreal had to do a lot of third and short. Dane Evans going deep. Tim White. Rather, it's Stephen Dunbar can't come up with it, and Tyrese Beverett interception. It's an interception by the former Tiger Cat, but there is a flag. Dunbar was overthrown. Well, Dunbar was tied up with that boundary corner for the Montreal Alouettes, almost to a complete standstill while the ball was in air. So I'm sure that this has to be an illegal contact or pass interference on Montreal's defense. But the. You know, that ball was thrown. Two fouls on the play. The first one is a major foul cut block. Hamilton, number 34. The second foul is illegal contact. Montreal, number eight. We'll go back five yards. We'll replay second down. Your deux penalty, un bloc illégal sur la ceinture, numéro 34, Hamilton. Contact illégal contre un receveur, Montréal, numéro 8. Un net de saint verge. On répète le deuxième essai. So... Hamilton keeping the ball has to be the good news there, Luke. Yeah, absolutely, except for, you know, if that, that, that cut block is just a decision that you can make or not make, right? And, and if that was, if that block had been legal, you know, that this would be, you know, moving up 10 yards and a first down for, for uh, the Ticats. I'm getting another look at it. It's a bad decision to, to, to cut that block. It's a player safety issue. West Hills took that penalty. And uh, check down here for Dane Evans on a screen to Ungerer, but the pass was low. He could not come up with it. And not a good drive for the Tiger Cats to begin this second half. They will have to punt. Close. Dane Evans giving up ground there to try to get that screen open to David Unger to the left. And he almost was able to do it, but David Unger can't hold on to it. Just down low by his ankles there. And the yeah, unfortunate uh, drive ending there for, for Hamilton after that. Great strike to Unger to start. Hamilton 85. After the jeu, penalty contre Hamilton, numéro 85, penalty 15 yards. It's going to be third down. Wow. 15 yards they march back for that. So another penalty on the Tiger Cats, another costly penalty. 10 degrees, feels like 7 degrees in Montreal. Gusts up to 30 kilometers an hour. A cold football snap to Michael Damagala. Not a very good kick. It'll land at about the Montreal 50. It bounces once. Chandler Worthy bounces off the first tackle attempted by Malik Carney. And he'll run off to his right along that far sideline and get a few extra yards. Montreal is going to have fantastic field position on their first drive of the second half. They'll be right near midfield. Tiger Cats lead. 10-3. We'll be right back on the Tie Catch Audio Network. RJ Bridehead with Luke Tasker. The Alouettes, after another penalty to Hamilton of no yards, they'll begin this drive from the Hamilton 48-yard line. And Luke, it wouldn't have been much different if the Tiger Cats just gambled and didn't get it. Yeah, wow. A really bad series of penalties and, and poor play there. So Montreal, by far, their best starting field position. Down by seven. First drive of the second half for the Alouettes. It's a completion to Hergie Mayala. He's across the 45-yard line down to about the 44 of Hamilton. So that started with a five-yard net penalty for West Hill. Then they took a 15-yard misconduct. Then they had a really mishit punt by Damagala with a 15-yard no-yards penalty. Uh, yeah. Oof. Uh, really, Terrible really sequence for Hamilton. Bad and drive. They hope the second half woes don't haunt them again. Second and five. Montreal on the Hamilton 43. Trevor Harris throwing it to a spot where Reggie White was. But Cariel Brooks, again, excellent coverage in that secondary. The all-star able to knock the ball away. Yeah, that was, a, that was really, really great coverage. It was a deep corner route by Reggie White, Jr., and Carriel Brooks was was above him. He was he was well up above him in, in a perfect place to make a play and knock that pass down. 
great defensive coverage, and that's what you need, complimentary football after the offense and special teams kind of lets you down to start this off. Now it's a third and five for Montreal. So they're going to go for a field goal. Looks like it'll be a 51-yard attempt for David Cote. His longest this season is a 49-yarder. The kick is up, and it is good. So Cote hits his longest field goal of the season from 51 yards, and Montreal gets a little bit closer to Hamilton on the scoreboard. It's 10-6. Tiger Cats still lead early in the third quarter. We'll be back on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Dane Evans back on the field. It's a fly sweep to Tim White. He runs off to his left. It is a big gain for Tim White, taking it all the way into Montreal territory inside the 40-yard line. It was a 33-yard gain. All of that after the catch as it was a little pitch, and Dane Evans goes right back to Tim White along the near sideline. And he'll be about halfway to the first down. So a couple of great plays. Dane Evans to Tim White. And White's statistics are starting to add up. Yeah. A huge explosive play from Tim White. Just what you need from him a couple times a game. And that's a big one for him to get. And great job by Dane. They set up a sort of a, a deep play there. And he came all the way back down to find Tim White's check down. Tim White over 100 yards receiving now on six receptions. Dane Evans goes to the sideline again, and it is Stephen Dunbar. He has the football, but the official's right there saying it's incomplete. It was along the near sideline. Would have been enough for a first down. Montreal brought the blitz, and Dane got that ball out of his hands very quickly, and yeah, really catchable ball. In fact, a great throw. Dunbar just unable to, to squeeze it and really miss there after what was a great uh, explosive play to sort of jumpstart this third quarter. Like you said, RJ, for some reason, and I and I don't have a good answer for you, but this is not a great quarter for the Ticats. They do not play well coming out of the half. They've only won the third quarter three times this year, but last game and a couple of times against Montreal. So the Alouettes have a field goal in the third quarter. Seth Small trying to answer it from 38 yards, and he is good. So Seth Small continues to roll. That's his second of the game and his fourth straight. So he's started another streak, and the Tiger Cats are back up by seven. It's 13 to six with still 10 minutes and one second to go in the third quarter. Stick around. We'll be back on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. This is Rob Hitchcock. And I'm Mike Morielli. Now back to Luke and RJ. On the Ticats Audio Network. Morielli and Hitch, usually a great podcast on the Ticats Audio Network. A little hiatus this week. Mike Morielli's voice sounding extra deep. He was in Vegas, so he refused to do the podcast. He was busy in Vegas. Jeshwin Antwi will run off to the right, get across the Montreal 50. And it's a first down for Montreal. So a good run for the Montreal running back. That'll move the ball up to the Montreal 52-yard line. Getting across midfield has been a challenge. It's 13 to 6. The Tiger Cats lead. Still over nine minutes to go in the third quarter. A pitch to Tyson Philplot after the Tiger Cats tried one of those to Tim White and were successful. The Alouettes try one to Philpot, but he can't get much more than two or three yards. Two on the ground there for Montreal, and I think Trevor Harris is gonna is gonna be looking to to put it in the air now. And they've got to start pushing down the field for the offensive sort of lag that was the start of this quarter. The Ticat defense has really done a great job in pass coverage and making Trevor Harris uncomfortable. Harris still under 100 yards passing. This is a second and seven from midfield. Harris throws to his right. It's caught by Keon Julian Grant, and Rodney Randall Jr. would not let go of that jersey with one hand and was able to bring Julian Grant down, but it is a first down for Montreal, and Harris is over 100 yards passing now. Yeah, the Ticats brought the blitz there. It's cover 10, all-man coverage, one, one high safety. 
but really great uh, comeback there by Julian Grant. Great shoulders, keeping his keeping his body in a running position and stops hard down on the Hamilton sidelines. Hamilton has really shut down Eugene Lewis. One catch tonight for three yards. Play action to Antwi. There's Lewis. You had to know that he was going to catch one after I gave that stat. And he crosses over the middle and gets to, or at least very close, to the Hamilton 35-yard line at another Montreal first down. Great job. That's Trevor Harris again. Good patience and timing. Kind of lets Eugene Lewis pass through that under coverage until he gets that open gap between the linebackers and Eugene Lewis, the big body, really great over the middle and able to make a strong catch for a first down. And now Montreal's got it rolling down into scoring territory. They trail the Tiger Cats by seven. They're on the Hamilton 35. Fresh set of downs for Harris. Throws over the middle. Jake Winicky dives and hauls it in. And Montreal is rolling right now. That'll be inside the Hamilton 20. Looks like they're spotting it on the Hamilton 15. So they started this drive off with those two run plays. They got a first down. Since then, that's three consecutive completions from Trevor Harris. And you, this is how this is how Harris. This is how his game goes. He gets in these streaks, and now all of a sudden, it's kind of he's heating up, and he starts, and you can just tell how clearly he's seeing those things. That was a great post route by Jake Winicky over the middle. Yeah, Tiger Cats fans have seen this from Trevor Harris in the second halves of both games so far this season. From the Hamilton 15, Harris is looking at the end zone, and Tunde Adelike knocks it away. Phil Pot maybe had a step on him, and then the star safety of the Tiger Cats was able to close the gap and knock it away. Just unbelievable coverage. Tunde Adelike, normally a free safety, of course. That's his home there on this play, like they do every now and again. It's Cam Kelly, the, the Sam linebacker, back playing the free safety, and... 100% a talent in that position as well. That's that's the skill set of Cam Kelly. But that allows Tunde Adelike to come up, and he is just as good at man coverage as about anybody. And that was right right on the money with that pass breakup. Clean, no contact too early. Great play. Fourth pass knocked down for the Tiger Cats tonight. Trevor Harris with time, not going for the end zone, but completes it to Eugene Lewis, hoping he could get to the end zone. Cannot. Three Tiger Cats were there. They stop him at the Hamilton five. Great route by Eugene Lewis. He runs up, runs his dig route, and then escapes back out. And that was two-man. Uh, RJ, I, coming from the receiver viewpoint of football, I think man coverage is a great defensive call. Excuse me, two-man coverage is a great defensive call. Those That allows your defensive backs to play very, very, very aggressive right down because they know they have safety help. And in that case right there that's Eugene Lewis running an unbelievable route in that aggressive man coverage tie cat down on the field it is Rodney Randall Jr. who was involved in that tackle on Eugene Lewis he's right by the tie cat sideline he's getting looked at by the training staff we will take a break the Tiger Cats lead 13 to 6 but Montreal is down to the Hamilton five we will be right back on the Tiger Cats audio network always great to hear from our listeners and where you're listening from Laura Cucci in Hamilton Karen and Sahid in their truck going to Inver Huron Provincial Park so great to have you listening Karen and Sahid and Glenn Grascheck in Niagara Falls. He heard Hitch in the pregame show talking about Montreal and how in Hitch's day the team would go in the day before the game and then leave right after the game. What about you, Luke? What, uh, what did the team do? Did you go in the day before? Did you stay after? Every year was different because whenever we had an afternoon game in Montreal, which was pretty common uh, for some reason on the scheduling, we would play 1 p.m., 4 p.m. games. We'd come home, but there was a couple years, and we'd always go out the night before, to, to Montreal and then there was a couple years where you have a night game like this and we stayed after the game as well and it's just a, it's a great city you know and and you know we always stay you stay right downtown and you get to you can kind of walk around you go to dinner before at all the nice steakhouses and and, and whatnot in Montreal and yeah fun fun city to travel to and one of that's some of the best memories of my of my playing days is the road trips to all the all the great CFL cities and Montreal certainly a good one well Montreal is one of my favorite if not my favorite city in Canada Great spot to be. 
It's a chilly night here in Montreal. 13 to 6, the Tiger Cats lead. Rodney Randall Jr. is still down for the Tiger Cats. He was involved in that tackle with Eugene Lewis, and three Tiger Cats were over there. And they are bringing the stretcher on the field for Rodney. He's been a an acquisition for the Tiger Cats, who has fit in very well for them, acquired from Montreal. It's one of those unfortunate plays where you know, it's friendly fire coming in, and it's always it's always really hard to brace yourself for that. I mean, all of these guys on this on this field have been playing football since they were children, and you get better, you get good at, at preparing for contact, you know, but always from your opponent. And when you yes. and when you get it unexpected like that, your body's not braced properly. And and you, you saw it, we we're taking another look right now. As as Randall just gets head to head contact, as as other tie cats are coming in for the tackle, he is talking. We see him, you know, moving his his lips and and his hands as they're as they're bracing him. Uh, but they're getting ready to. It looks like put him on the stretcher, and you can only hope it's, you know, precautionary. But he's yes. clearly, you know, trying to work through this. Yes, they've taken the face mask off of his helmet. The helmet is still on Rodney's head, but the face mask has been taken off. The Paramedics are out there now, as is the stretcher, and they will take caution, as we all know, to immobilize him as much as possible as he gets onto the stretcher and further tests. There's 5.56 to go in the third quarter. It's been a low-scoring game, 13-6, to six, Hamilton leads. The players on the field... Most of them on one knee. The trainers from both Hamilton and with the Alouettes all, all gathered around, sort of, you know, uh, all team doctors on both sides, putting their heads together and making sure that all the protocol is followed and that 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 uh, Randall's safety is maximum importance. And boy, a hard, it's a hard part of the sport. I, it's 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 a really really challenging thing to watch, and it's a and it's the nature of the game there's just it's just unbelievable amount of, of speed and contact out there among among world world elite athletes so rodney randall is being looked at the stretcher is on the field the paramedics are there the training staff is there and he is well known to both of these teams played last season with montreal started this season with the alouettes was traded to the tiger cats has a couple of interceptions with the Tiger Cats. And he is down by the Tiger Cats sideline right around the five yard line. Stretcher on the field. We will take a break as they continue to Look at Rodney Randall Jr. on the field. The stretcher is there, and we will update you when we return on the Ticats Audio Network. In Montreal, the training staff, the paramedics, still working on Rodney Randall Jr., the former Alouette, now with the Tiger Cats. He made a good tackle on Eugene Lewis to prevent a touchdown. And then teammate coming in, made contact with Rodney and he has been down. They've removed the face mask off of his helmet and taking every precaution now to make sure as they transfer him to the stretcher. Like you said, this this is a player in a unique position where he has a relationship with a lot of the guys on the field and there's a whole mix of the of blue and white jerseys you know, mixed together all around the, the, the site of this injury and everybody's sort of taking a break from that competitive energy to really care about a guy, a, team, a teammate or a former teammate for many of these players. Coach O standing right near the center of that group like, he's, like he often does. And, you know, the, 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 it just gives you at least a little bit of, of the ability to, to 
take a breath because we did see him speaking, you know, and we saw mm -hmm. him moving his arms and his fingers. Uh, and, and that's always encouraging, but clearly, uh, clearly they've, they've determined it's in their best interest for him to be immobilized. Absolutely. And a game that had a, a lot of excitement going in, a lot of importance in the standings. And when a player is injured, as Rodney Randall Jr. is, the game takes a back seat. We hope he is going to be okay. The medical staff on the field taking every precaution they can. The stretcher is there. But now they're securing Rodney Randall Jr. as best they can before they attempt to move him. Trevor Harris and the Alouettes in, in the middle of a very good drive now, very close to the Hamilton end zone, and it's a seven-point game. And so they're going to come back out and try to try to even out this game here if they can put it in the end zone and four straight completions here for Trevor Harris as they're doing that. And this break is sort of, uh, you know, that sort of unexpected pause in action where and kind of the only thing that could have put this exciting game, you know, on totally on the back burner, right? It's just yeah. a, a, the, a matter of just, you know, everyone focused on ensuring that, that uh, you know, player safety is of utmost importance. Rodney's been lifted onto the stretcher. How difficult is it, Luke, as a, as a player? There's such intensity in a football game, and then a moment like this, and now you, you're going to have to get back into that, that football mindset. That can't be easy. Yeah, it is a little bit uh, jarring, you know, and just mentally and emotionally, you're so tuned in to what's what you're to your job and what's happening in the game and what's next for you, and and you got to snap back into that uh, after after something like this, and it's not easy all the time. It really isn't. You can, you've got, you, you know, you're kind of still thinking about your teammate and wondering, you know, what. Uh, what the status is and, and I, we will update throughout the night if we get information we'll be sure to let you know absolutely so the the crowd applauding is Rodney Randall jr. is on the stretcher the paramedics have him secured to the stretcher and he is being removed from the field every medical procedure they could do to ensure the safety of Rodney was completed on the field and now he's being escorted off on the stretcher. It is a 13 to six lead for the Tiger Cats. A lot of players have been moving around, trying to jump, stretch, see Tyler Ternowski on the bike. It's a cool evening in Montreal and Rodney Randall Jr. was looked at by the medical staff. It was close to 15 minutes. It's a long time for these players who now have to amp it up and get right back into the heat of battle. 5.56 remaining, so just under six minutes remaining in the third quarter. Montreal has the ball down to the Hamilton Five. Our best wishes go to Rodney Randall, and like Luke said, we'll certainly update you if we get an update on his condition. So Montreal, a couple of receptions by Eugene Lewis, have them down to the five. We're getting word that Rodney was moving his arms and legs. So that is great news. Trevor Harris hands off to Jeshwin Antwi. And the line of scrimmage was the five. The Tiger Cats might have pushed them back to the six. Good tackling. Cam Kelly might have been the first one in there. Okay, second and goal. That's a great stop right there. And boy, if you can, you know, if you can eliminate anything less than you know maybe four yards here, and you're gonna and you're gonna have a tough decision uh, as a Montreal Alouette whether it's time to to try to tie this game up and put it in the Trevor Han Harris's hands or to kick your field goal. But big second down for the Tie Cat defense. They are gonna have the ball at the Hamilton five once again. Current drive. Six passes, two rushes. This is play action. Trevor Harris going end zone. It is caught. 
It's a touchdown. It's Eugene Lewis. And the Alouettes are a convert away from tying the football game. Good route, good catch, and I, I love the throw by Trevor Harris. He made it so easy. Eugene Lewis on, a, on sort of a, an out route in the mid-depth mid of that end zone to Trevor Harris's left. And Trevor really puts an easy pass closer to the front pylon. You know, Eugene Lewis catches this sort of running back forward towards the front of the end zone and and you know he just put it in a space and let him adjust to it and that 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 really is a very very wide receiver friendly throw rodney randall jr taken off the field due to injury was moving his arms and legs des lawrence came in and that looks like who the alouettes targeted on that play david cote the convert attempt it's off the upright that would have tied the game Instead, the Tiger Cats hang on to a slim one-point lead. Will that one point turn out to play a factor in the end result? We'll have to see, but that is a critical miss for Montreal. Yep, right off of the right upright and sort of uh, sort of looked wrong right off the foot there, but very interesting, and that was uh, that's to keep a Tiger Cat lead as they go in to try to put some more points on in this third quarter, which has been a very quiet third quarter for the Ticat offense. And now it's been, you know, in real time, half an hour or so yes. since they've been on the field. It's another halftime, right? And it's, uh, well, longer than a halftime. And, uh, you know, you've got to you've got kind of smelling salts or whatever it is for yeah. you and, and, and get back at it because there is no time to lose. Uh, the Ticats have to, have to keep on the gas here and, you know, the injury delay was 14 minutes, and then you've got Montreal's drive on either side of that. and Stretch and do some jumping jacks and get it going. <laughs> get warmed up. Kickoff in the hands of Tim White. He makes a couple of nice moves. He's across the 40. The 45 up to the 50, right near midfield. Tim White with a great return on that kickoff. Wow. And you almost thought... He paused to sort of juke in the middle of that return. You thought he was going to get caught from behind, but he's got that level of acceleration. Uh, he took off again for an additional some 25 yards. That was an excellent return, and just what we were talking about. It's just what this uh, the offense kind of needs a jump start right now to begin their, their, their second go at this third quarter. Dane Evans, his last two games, 42 for his last 53. He has been on a hot streak. This is... Great Dane territory, just over four minutes to go in the third quarter. Dane Evans wants to pass. He's going to tuck this football, and he runs. He dives head first across midfield. A brave run for Dane Evans, a courageous run where he did not slide prior to contact, which we've come to expect from Dane Evans. He's fearless. You know, that was it was a three-man rush, and it was a productive run. He, he took off, and he got positive yards. I thought he maybe could have stayed in the pocket a second longer there. That was a th – this offensive line is really doing a great job. There has not been a sack against Dane Evans tonight, and he's, and he's got time to get rid of that. Three and a half to go in the third quarter. This is a second and seven right from midfield. Dane Evans looked to his right, goes to his left. It is complete. To David Ungerer, he breaks a tackle, and he will – take it across I midfield close to the 50 but he's going to be short of the first down I think Luke yeah I think so not quite enough it was sort of the check down that Dane Evans found David Unger and you're right and he, we've seen him a couple times tonight break that first tackle he's he's, he does, he's got a strong that strong lower body low center of gravity and, he, and he's been doing a great job with that they're staying on the field here so it looks like third and two, and the ball is on the Montreal 51-yard line. So a gamble here for the Tiger Cats, a long gamble. They need two yards to keep this drive going. Dane Evans, he steps back, throws quickly. It's off the hands and incomplete. An incompletion intended for Tim White. He could not make the catch. So a gamble ends up in a turnover on downs and Montreal will take over from their own 50 51 yard line the ball's right in between the two we'll say it's on the Montreal 50. 
It's really an interesting play call. And I actually think that they got it. They got what they wanted. They won the play. And, and unfortunately, Tim White could not hold on to that ball. It, it, you know, he's, he, he's on a slant route from the most inside receiver. So he is, it's very close to Dane Evans. And when that ball comes so fast, it doesn't give it a chance. But you expect that catch from Tim White. No receivers up at the line of scrimmage. The Wagle, there's three of them now. And Trevor Harris throws to his right, right at midfield. Julian Grant makes the catch, and Jamal Roll was there immediately to limit the game. How about that for an, uh, for an aggressive play call, though? You know, re a, a regular keep the offense on the field. I thought that they were going to hard count and then call a timeout, you know, and mm -hmm. potentially try to get that first the first down on a penalty. But they just called. They had they let Dane Evans give it a shot there, and I, again, I think that they I think that he executed. It's a it's a miss really, and and. Uh, we'll see if Trevor Harris can capitalize on that first turnover of the game. Montreal getting better field position in this second half. That turnover on downs was the first turnover by Hamilton in their last 103 offensive plays. Trevor Harris scrambles and finds a wide open Walter Fletcher. Breaks one tackle, gets across the Hamilton 40, and Montreal's in business again in Hamilton territory. Yeah, they got just what they wanted. That was Walter Fletcher moved out of the backfield from his running back position to Trevor Harris's right. And what that does is it brings Kyle Wilson out of the box to cover that down. And they set up a really nice little call to pick pass, call it an option route, whatever. But effectively, Kyle Wilson gets caught up in that other concept from the outside receiver. And that leaves Fletcher all by himself. Really well done by, by Montreal. Montreal is up to the Hamilton 38-yard line. Hand off. Running right up the middle for another big game. Tough to get. Positive yards against this Hamilton defense, but Walter Fletcher does and puts a big chunk out of that first down, maybe a gain of eight. Ted Laurent, you know, taking a little bit more of the reps tonight with Dylan Wynn out of the lineup, and he's slow to get up, slow to get up off the, out of the Montreal backfield there and off the field. Injuries still piling up for the Tiger Cats. Pampy White. He left early on in the game. Rodney Randall Jr. taken off in a stretcher. We're told he was moving his hands and feet, and Ted Laurent banged up. Trevor Harris, he's heating up here. He had 91 yards passing in the opening half, 84 yards passing just in the third quarter alone. And it's another handoff to Jeshrin Antwi, and he should have enough for the first down. Jovan Santos Knox coming up to fill that gap, and he, and he does it well. He's the... Ticat's leading tackler, but positive gain still, and they are going to move the chains for the Alouettes. So Alouettes now inside the Hamilton 30 on the Hamilton 28-yard line. This will be the last play of the third quarter. And it is a close game. Tiger Cats have not trailed in the game. They currently lead by a point, but the Alouettes are deep in Hamilton territory. Play action to Antwi. That buys Harris some time. He completes it to Reggie White Jr. over the middle, down to the four-yard line of the Tiger Cats. Maybe the three. Tiger Cats stop him before he gets into the end zone, but it will be a first and goal for Montreal from inside the Hamilton five to begin the fourth quarter. So the lead for the Tiger Cats has dwindled down to a point and Montreal very close to taking the lead. The fourth quarter is next on the Tie Cats Audio Network. In Montreal, the Tiger Cats lead 13 to 12. Third meeting of the season between Hamilton and Montreal. First game, Hamilton won by seven points. Second game, Montreal won by a point. This is the final meeting of the regular season, so it will be the tie-breaking game in the standings in the East Division and entering the fourth quarter, it is a one point lead for Hamilton. They have not trailed in the football game, but they might soon as Montreal has a first and goal inside the Hamilton five yard line. Trevor Harris, a big completion to Reggie White Jr. Stands in the pocket, throws to the end zone. Herge Mayala had it for a moment, but could not hang on. Richard Leonard was able to knock the ball loose. Great, great coverage by Richard Leonard. Couple, you know, 
sub substantially shorter there. I mean, that's a big reach to get out for that ball and just in such good body position, he's able to hack the hands and the arms down and make it just too difficult of a of a catch there. And that's just, that's excellent coverage, especially down here in the scoring territory where you gotta be all the tighter and all the all all all, all, all the more crisp with your coverage. Tiger Cats on uh, second and goal now. Alouettes on the Hamilton four yard line. Trevor Harris, he's back to pass again. Pressure coming, throws to the end zone. It's off the upright. He had Eugene Lewis crossing behind the upright, but it hit, I think, the crossbar, and it's incomplete. So. Yep, just the ruling is an incomplete pass. Once once that pass hits the goalpost, it, the play is over. And I scarred into my memory is <laughs> being wide open in the end zone and a pass from Jeremiah Mazzoli floating to me and, of course, dinked the upright. <laughs> and, if, and I can, like, see it in my mind, and I actually don't think we scored on the drive. Uh, so, you know, interesting little nuance of the Canadian game, right, that, that uh, isn't down south and, uh, yeah. With the uprights uh, right at the goal line. Yeah. This is a little chip shot here for David Cote from 12 yards. Easy field goal for him. Alouette's lead for the first time. It's 15 to 13 very early in the fourth quarter. And I kind of figured it wasn't going to be a, a story of success when you said you were scarred by <laughs> the memory of the upright. <laughs> I, I, I remember one in Edmonton, and I actually think that I that it, it happened again, and I and, and I want to say it might have been Montreal actually, but yeah, every now and again that's y y you get that. Of course, the goalpost can be advantageous too. Andy Fantuz was the master of uh, <laughs> using the goalpost as a little pick, you know, as you're <laughs> running your route and, and, and using it to your advantage. But uh, Montreal settling for the field goal—that's the best thing that's happened. That happened, you know, in the second half so far to to the Tie Cats. Yeah, I was going to ask you. They Probably, other than a turnover created by the defense, that was best case scenario. So now, Tiger Cats trail, but just by two. Dane Evans back on the field, and he's looking deep. He's throwing deep. He has a receiver. It's Tim White. Tyrese Beverett was right there. The ball is incomplete. White could not make the catch. It was something like a, like a 57, 60-yard flight of that football. I mean, it was a huge throw down field, and it looked like Tim White couldn't quite couldn't quite adjust to that ball. It kind of, he had a chance at it, and for a ball flying that deep, you know, it really was right in his basket, and another kind of miss there from, from your biggest uh, playmaker on the field. Love how Dane's giving it, letting it fly, though. I mean, they're, they're gonna not, not, uh, not hide away from taking chances here. Now a second and 10, though, from the Hamilton 40 in. Dane Evans under pressure. He is brought down. Dane Evans is sacked by Jamal Davis, number 99 for the Alouettes. And the Tiger Cats will have to punt, trailing now for the first time. Didn't trail until the fourth quarter. Well, it, it's it's not that complicated. It's players making plays and executing. You see a, a, a miss there to get the first down in the last drive, a miss there on the deep ball. Ticats third quarter was plagued with penalties, and and then they get one turnover, and they get one sack, and, and here's what the game looks like. It really is ugly compared to that first half, which was a very clean execution. It's chilly. With the wind, feels like about plus five or six. Michael Damagala needs a big punt for the Tiger Cats. He's standing on his own 24-yard line. Trop de temps pour mettre le ballon au jeu. Hamilton numéro 19. Five-yard penalty for the Saint Ange. Still third down. That will make it even more difficult as a time count violation. That will be Michael Damagala. You can see we're getting a look at Craig Butler, special teams coordinator's face, and, and nothing short of disgust. He's not exactly sure what happened on the field there, but they, his guys obviously weren't tuned in to, to that ticking play clock. Michael Damagala, the punt, not a great one. Caught at about the 42 by Chandler Worthy. He backtracks, but to gain more yardage, he's across midfield, across the Hamilton 50, close to the 45, but a lot of flags on the field. Yeah, it's. I think it was Stavros Katsantonis got 
got blocked in the back, and it's gonna this they're gonna march this way way back. So the penalties will be sorted out. The Alouettes will still have pretty good field position as they have the lead now. It's 15 to 13. You're listening to the Tie Cats Audio Network. Fourth quarter has been a tough one for the Tiger Cats this season. Most points they have allowed. They've allowed 153 points in the fourth quarter, and half of the touchdowns they've allowed all season have come in the fourth quarter in Montreal. Beginning this drive will get a yard on their opening carry. So there's 12 minutes to go in the game. Montreal leads Hamilton 15 to 13. RJ Broadhead with Luke Tasker. Second place on the line. Tiger Cats trying to get a share of it with Montreal. Trying for their first road win of the season. 0-6 on the road. Alouettes Looking for a big fourth quarter to secure it, and that is a completion off to the right of Trevor Harris to Eugene Lewis, and he does his patented indication of a first down, and it is a first down as Eugene Lewis was quiet for a while, but he is involved big time now. Tycats showed a, a man coverage shell, like a cover 10 shell with one high safety but then morphed out of it into a zone. And I'm telling you, Trevor Harris, it just, it's just, he, he can recognize it too quickly. And he sees that space and gets the ball out of his hands very efficiently. Field position. First four drives for Montreal in the game were from their own 22 on average. Last four drives averaging their own 45 yard line. So much better field position. Trevor Harris decided to tuck that ball and get what he could get and maybe just across the 40 yard line. Great job by that Ticat defense on first down to, to force this longer second and eight here and most two and outs forced of any CFL defense. That's the Ticats and this would be an opportunity for them to, to stop this, this Alouette momentum. Alouette's up to their own 41-yard line. Trevor Harris, empty backfield, couple of steps back, completes the pass to Eugene Lewis. He is shy of the 45, needed to get to the 49-yard line, so he does not get the first down, and Montreal brings on their punting unit. I really like that play call uh, defensively from Mark Washington. They came out and they show cover zero, so they've got everybody loaded up on the line, showing that pressure. And in, in, in a sense, they still play that coverage, but they drop two of those guys out in, for low zone help, and that's exactly where the ball was thrown in an immediate tackle. Great execution there. David Ungerer back to return this kick. He was scheduled to just be a returner in this game, but he's caught five passes, 47 yards, as he's stepped in for the injured Pappy White. Ungerer drifts a little bit to his left, steps across the 20 at his own 22. Stutter step to his left, now he'll go to his right, trying to get past Jeshwin Antwi, who has been very good running. And also on special teams, Tyrese Beverett also in there. He's the leading special teams tackler for the Owls. Dane Evans comes on the field, hoping for a fourth quarter comeback. 9.46 to go, the Tiger Cats trail the Alouettes 15 to 13. This is the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Close game in Montreal. The Alouettes lead the Tiger Cats 15 to 13. RJ Broadhead with Luke Tasker. There's 9.46 to go. It's the dreaded fourth quarter for the Tiger Cats. They need a massive fourth quarter here. Trailing for the first time. Down by two points, not insurmountable. Tough starting field position here for the offense. From their own 10, Wes Hills, he gets chugging off to his left, and he will get about four yards, and a flag flies. Expecting this to be a holding downfield by a, by a Ticat receiver. And that is not what they need right now as they're trying to gain back some of that first half success driving the ball down the field. Last four drives for the Tiger Cats. Most plays they've had in any drive is five. So the offense has gone quiet. Score is 15 to 13. Well, we've talked about the, the difficulties that the Tiger Cats have had in the third and fourth quarters. And, you know, every game is different. But tonight, it's pretty straightforward. 
They got penalties that they've gotten penalties at really inappropriate times that really Holden, hurt their Hamilton, ability. To number 62, Hamilton 62. We'll go back half the distance. It's still first down. You said yep. penalties, Luke. Penalties, and then you get that that turnover on downs, which was, you know, a, what we all kind of think is a, a good play call, but not did, weren't able to execute, and here you go. Last four drives, Hamilton has totaled 62 yards. Now Dane Evans in his own end zone as they're backed up to their own five, but he checks it down to Wes wow. Hills, and he's giving them some breathing room across the 25, close to the 30. It is a great run by Wes Hills. It's a first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger catch, keep it rolling. What How a great huge run. Was that? Oh, huge. And Dane Evans did an unbelievable job of buying time to make that screen uh, in a safe space and just uh, excellent execution by West Hill. That's the explosive play that you need. Under nine minutes to go. Tiger Cats trailing by two. They're out of the shadows of their end zone. Dane Evans throws a hard pass. Another reception for David Ungerer. That's his sixth of the game, and he's across the Hamilton 35. He'll be very close to a first down. They need to get to the 39 for that first down. Second and one. Dane Evans under center. Keeps it himself. And this is not automatic. It'll be close. I know, Luke, you were wanting to see a nice second and one deep ball. I'm going to say it until somebody does it. <laughs> <laughs> And then I told you so. Exactly. <laughs> and then we'll know they're listening. We, I don't know, wasted opportunity, and especially with a, with what I think is, you know, they've been doing a good job with taking their shots in the second half, even though they haven't all worked out. But I, you know, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been surprised there if if Dane and, and Tommy Condell would have dialed up a, a a fake short yardage. But first down, L. Was. So a Tiger Cats keep it rolling with an active Green and Ross first down. It's a handoff this time to Sean Thomas Erlington. A nice hole created by the offensive line. And Thomas Erlington is up to the Hamilton 50. Keep in mind, they started this on their own five. A few plays later, they're getting close to midfield. And taking off big chunks on the ground, which is, which is encouraging to see. And that was Brandon Revenberg, the left guard, and sort of the staple, you know, the consistency in that offensive line. And he was, he was 15 yards upfield blocking the way there. Another first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. Dane Evans, he's trying to change the play. Walked up to the offensive line and a lot of communication with the hands and being as loud as they can right now for the Tiger Cats. So an audible called. It's a handoff to Wes Hills. He goes up the middle and crushes into that secondary of the Alouettes, Darius Pickett in on the tackle. But the Tiger Cats are across midfield in Montreal territory. Wow, and again, just like that first quarter, there's already, there's only six minutes and 40 seconds left in the game. I mean, this, this fourth quarter's, you know, evaporated just the same way, and this, this ground attack by Hamilton is impressive. Tiger Cats on the Montreal 54, just across midfield. It's a second and four. It's another handoff to Wes Hills. He's got the first down, presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. West Hills, down Hills for another first down. 51, 51. It's a 10-yard penalty. Still second down. Wow. So, so another Hamilton penalty here. Right now, the Ticats have 11 penalties for 112 yards. And keep in mind, that, that penalty yardage always, that's just the on-paper penalty yardage. That, that you also have all the hidden yardage lost. That was a 20-yard swing of that 10-yard yeah. ten penalty because of, of West Hill's gain. And that 11 for 112 is, for Montreal, they have four penalties for 35 yards. So the penalty battle, Tiger Cats are losing that. This is a second and 14. Hamilton push back onto their side of midfield now on their own 46. Dane Evans with lots of time. He is airing it out. And Tim White trying to go up to make the catch. It was very, very tight coverage with Raheem Wilson. White could not catch the football. It's incomplete. Yeah, you know, I like, of course, you know, you, you can take that shot downfield. It was second and 14. I just think, it, it, and great protection, by the way. But I think, Dane, it's too long in the pocket before letting that ball go. I mean, Tim White kind of had to turn back and, and, and go face up that ball instead of catching it over his shoulder and tough to do. 
Now, is there a challenge flag? I think I see Coach O's challenge flag on the field, and we've said it before. When there's <laughs> when there's plays in the secondary, he's pretty good on these challenges. I think he and I think he may get this. There is some hand fighting, and it looks like Tim White had an arm locked to his side, pinched to his side there. Oh, this is a crucial. Hamilton is challenging the ruling on the last play. They believe it should have been pass interference against their number 12. Hamilton demands the revision of the game. They are saying that they had to have a penalty to pass interference against their number 12. It's a crucial and pivotal moment in this football game. With the Alouettes leading by two, getting another look at it, Luke. It did look like... Wilson did have contact on Tim White's arm. They will look at that. We will have the decision when we come back. Tiger Cats trail by two, 5.49 to go. The call was just made. Ben Major now making the call in French, but it is pass interference against Montreal. Coach O with another challenge win, and this is an important point in this football game with 5.49 to go, a two-point deficit. The Tiger Cats find themselves in. Raheem Wilson pass interference, and all of a sudden, the Tiger Cats are down to the Montreal 25-yard line, a 44-yard difference. Huge. And in fact, it's the 20-yard line where the ball is being spotted. And with five minutes and 49 seconds left, it's a, it's just as big as, it, really, it's just as big as a turnover. I mean, it, that's that's how huge that that personal, or excuse me, that pass interference is for the Tie Cats to now have a chance in score zone here to capitalize. Something they did very well a week ago, but have not done well throughout the rest of the season. Tiger Cats have a touchdown from West Hills in this football game. Seth Small, he's contributed with a couple of field goals. Montreal leads 15 to 13. Final meeting of the regular season between these two teams. They've split the season series coming in. The winner of this game will have the tie break and the East Division is close. It's up for grabs for second place, no doubt about that. Montreal currently in that spot. Tiger Cats with a victory would equal the Alouettes in points and would have the tie break. Montreal up by two, Tiger Cats first and 10 from the Montreal 20. Hand off to Wes Hill, straight ahead. He's to the 10, brought down at about the seven yard line. It is a first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. Man, unbelievable Wes Hill. And, and we, we talked about it all, all week, Hills and Sean Thomas Erlington and what they did in the in the Winnipeg game and then on this drive alone I mean they've been driving down the field with not just not just five yard gains 12 15 yard gains really impressive first and goal from the Montreal seven and there'll be a delay Ben Major going to meet with the officials this Field position, thanks to a Orlando Steinauer successful challenge on pass interference on Montreal. So Ben Major will whistle the play in. Hills, six of nine rushing attempts in this game have been for five or more yards. Wes Hills, tough to bring down. It's first and goal from the Montreal 7. Dane Evans is all set, has Hills behind him. He gets the football again, goes straight ahead. He's across the five, down to the two. 4.50 remaining, the clock is running. Boy, they're, they're players waving training staff onto the field sort of aggressively. and. Boy, we've had our we've had a share of injuries in this game that's really unfortunate. And the staff for Montreal running onto the field. Nick Usher is down. The Alouettes. Not a head injury in this case. He's moving around and and and, and uh, clearly something with his lower body. They're checking his right knee area. 
Tiger Cats having success on the ground with West Hills, 6'1", 218 pounds, tough to bring down. And Usher might have had players involved in the tackle roll onto the back of that right leg. It's a two-point lead for Montreal. Tiger Cats did not trail until the fourth quarter. 15 to 13, low scoring game. Wes Hills, last two games, 20 carries, 118 yards, averaging almost six yards per carry. Tiger Cats look like this drive might have come to an end. Long, deep pass by Dane Evans intended for Tim White. Initially ruled incomplete. Coach O, Hall of Famer for his great play in the secondary in his days. Has a good eye for that. Through the challenge flag was correct. And it was pass interference. So now the Tiger Cats trying to take the lead in the latter stages of this fourth quarter. Trying to take the lead back. Nick Usher remains down for the Alouettes. Cool evening in Montreal with the wind gusting up to about 30 kilometers an hour at times. It's plus five or six degrees. Ball is spotted on the Montreal three. It'll be second and goal. So far, Hamilton is on this drive started on their own 11 yard line and it's sort of in real time taken a very long time. We've had challenges and we've had, uh, you, you know, now a, a, an injury here but they've driven all the way down the field. 10 plays, five first downs, and you have that huge pass interference challenge there. Almost a five minute drive here for the Tiger Cats. Nick Usher being helped off the field, not putting any weight on his right leg. In clear discomfort, an important player for the Alouettes. So many teams, including the Tiger Cats, missing a lot of key players due to injury. Rodney Randall Jr., if you're just tuning in, he was down on the field. He was taken off on a stretcher. He was moving his extremities, taken to hospital for further observation. And we're about to resume with 4.45 to go. The clock is running. Second a goal for the Tiger Cats from the Montreal Three. It has been Wes Hills taking it all the way from the 20 down to the three. Will it be Hills again? Evans in the shotgun. He does fake the handoff to Hills. Throws to the end zone into that far corner. It's incomplete. Keandre Smith, first time he was targeted tonight. Could not make the catch. Man, and we mentioned earlier, Montreal is a CFL field that has the end zones cut off. The corners are carved at that angle. And, and you could have used a few more yards of end zone here for, to, to get this ball a little bit in a little bit of a better position. That would have been a catch if he could have secured that, even though his feet didn't touch, his elbow would have hit the ground. And it, it, it was very close to being an unbelievably impressive touchdown. I love the throw by Dane Evans. I just wonder if it's just not that high of a probability play, you know, and in, into that, into that sawed off end, end zone. DeAndre Smith, you're right, Luke, almost uh, an acrobatic catch. Seth Small, two for two. He's going to have a little chip shot here. A nine-yarder, kicks it through. He's three for three in the game, and the Tiger Cats have the lead again. It's by a point, 16 to 15. We knew coming in that this was going to be a close game. Last game was decided by a point in Montreal's favor. This one, right. Tiger Cats have a lead by a point with 4.04 to go, and something tells me, Luke, that with over four minutes to go, that might not be the last score of the game. In week 10, you think you see a game-winning field goal, and then you actually see a game-winning <laughs> yeah. field goal. And right now, they're now they're trading back and forth with a one-point game, or what was a two-point game, now it's a one-point game in the Tiger Cats' favor, and one of these quarterbacks need to, needs to bust this open with some completions down the field. Did you like kicking the field goal there to take the lead back? I, I did. I think you got to. I think you got to. 
secure your lead with this with this much time left in the game? I, I, I was I was considering the same question, but I do think the field goal is the right answer there to take the lead back. Montreal hands off to Walter Fletcher. He goes up the middle. It's a huge run for Fletcher. He's across midfield, across the Hamilton 50, a 21-yard run against this Hamilton defense that came in number one against the rush. Like I said, both of these teams do not have a history in 2022 of running the ball very effectively. And tonight, lots of explosive runs. So Montreal creeping themselves into Hamilton territory, getting closer to putting some points on the board. They trail by one. This time, there's nothing there on the ground for Fletcher. So here, this is a great second down opportunity for the Ticats because you're flirting with the field goal line right here. Yes. And we'll see what they give up on this second down. Three minute warning, 2.58 on the clock. Hamilton leads 16 to 50. Another exciting finish ahead on the Ticats Audio Network. Trevor Harris back to pass, completes it to Reggie White Jr. on that right sideline. It's a first down for Montreal. Now you'd have to think they're well within David Cote field goal range. 242 to go. Hamilton leads by a point, 16 to 15. Yeah, Reggie White with just a really smooth little out route to the right side of Trevor Harris and moves the chains. RJ Broadhead with Luke Tasker. What a finish. Tiger Cats had a big win against Winnipeg. They haven't had many games where they can coast. Wouldn't say that was coasting against Winnipeg, but this one is going to come right down to the wire. A completion to Tyson Philpot. He creeps a little closer down at the Hamilton 26-yard line. Cover zero by the Ticats there, and Trevor Harris gets the ball immediately, throws it to Philpot to his left, and great, great physical run there to break some tackles and get almost to that first down marker. Now Montreal with two and a half to go in the game, trailing by a point. They're well within field goal range. We'll see if they try to keep this ball on the ground or if they go for it here. Three receivers to the left of Trevor Harris. Now Herge Mayala cuts in front of Harris. He loops it up down to the 10. Wanted to get it to Eugene Lewis. Jamal Roll was there and flags fly. The ball was not caught, but flags fly and uh, Montreal fans are celebrating. Not number nine, it was on Jamal Roll, but I, Roll is clearly upset, and I can kind of understand why. Like, there are tons of contact, no doubt about it, but really it's like, you know, just getting tangled up. Like, you know, sometimes sometimes if you run a bad route as a receiver, you know, it can it can draw that pass interference as well because you just got no separation from your defensive back. It's a little handsy as we look at it again, but, you know, Eugene Lewis just ran down the field straight into Jamal Roll. Now Montreal in the Hamilton nine. Joshua Antry running to his left, gets across the 10. Tunde Adelike in pursuit the whole time. Little help from Julian Hauser brings him down just inside the Hamilton 10. Yeah, just, just about for no gain there. And so second and goal, but with almost a full 10 yards still to go, really important play here, so important. I mean, to keep this into the into within the field goal battle, the field goal back and forth. Hamilton 130 penalty yards tonight. That's a season high. Under two minutes to go. Montreal down by one, second and goal from the Hamilton nine. Trevor Harris wants to pass, throwing to the end zone. Touchdown, Eugene Lewis. Montreal with its biggest lead of the game, with hardly any time left in the game. Minute 42 to go. Well, it's plenty of time to put an offensive drive together here, plenty of time but you've got to do it. And in the second half here, Hamilton has struggled to move the ball efficiently. They did get the one drive with a big uh, pass interference call there. I think Dane Evans has been throwing the ball great and here is the real test. Last week in a different situation, but in that fourth quarter, they had to drive down and, and keep the ball in their hands uh, and keep the clock running. Now they've got to do it quick and they've got to get down the field 
fast here. Alouettes are going to go for two. A missed convert earlier. David Cote hit the upright. So trying to make up for that. Throw to the end zone. Jumping up to make the catch is Reggie White Jr. The two-point convert is good. Opponents are five for six on two-point converts against the Tiger Cats this season. Very much like that touchdown pass thrown earlier in this game by Trevor Harris. It's like a really gentle corner route, but where he places that ball lets Reggie White you know, soften from that angle and come back towards the front pylon. I just love that route and that, and that throw that Trevor Harris keeps giving his receivers, and it's a really catchable ball good protection there and that touchdown by Eugene Lewis was nice an inside fade to that back of the end zone and, and good adjustment to the ball keeping Jamal Roll out of position to be able to make a play on it now here, here we go got a chance to get a great return here which is a good place to start they've gotten one explosive return uh, already from Tim White now would be a great time for another and then Dane Evans has to take the field uh, with some purpose here and move the ball down quickly. Eugene Lewis looked like the Tiger Cats had him figured out finally. First half, they held him to one reception for three yards. Second half, six catches, 49 yards, two touchdowns. Kickoff, it's Tim White. He's across the 30. Now up to the 35, goes up the middle, across the 40, down at the 45-yard line. He kind of changed speeds. He was gliding and then sped up as he spotted a hole up the middle. It's a good return by Tim White. That was, a, that was an excellent return, 45-yard line. Really great field position. You can't really ask for much more from your return team. Now Dane Evans has a minute 35 to go. Well, this is what it's all about, isn't it, Luke? Yes, it is, absolutely. And it is a seven-point game. Dane Evans coming off a magnificent game against Winnipeg. Can he lead a comeback here? An important drive needed. 20 for 27, 257 yards, and it is a good start. A completion to Stephen Dunbar Jr. Had to reach behind him to make the catch, but he's into Montreal territory. It is a first down presented by Active Green and Ross. The Tiger Cats keep it rolling. Wow, huge completion. And then, or excuse me, huge return to start this drive, followed up by a 22-yard completion. That is just great, great football there. And to be honest, the clock's not the issue now. You've got the time to, to finish this drive off. You've got to relax and make and, and, and make your plays. Minute 12, the clock is running. All the way up to the Montreal 43. Dane Evans has Tim White in the block. Another completion. This is to Keandre Smith. His first catch of the game. Got across the 40. Tried to dive for more. And he fumbled the football. Alouettes have picked it up. Mustafa Johnson picks up the fumble. Now the question for the Tiger Cats is, was he down before the ball came loose? And Tiger Cats can only hope that he was. Certainly made the catch. He's turning up field to fight for more yards. Really hard to tell as we're getting another look at it, but you know, he, he's, he is reaching the ball out and he's trying his best to stretch for. He winds up stretching it out and hitting the shin of one of the Alouette's players. And they will take a look at this in slow motion. Mustafa Johnson, the big defensive lineman, picked that ball up and is this another fourth quarter turnover that will crush the hopes of the Tiger Cats in making a comeback. Just the turnover on downs tonight earlier in the second half. That's been the only error as far as turnovers for the Tiger Cats, and this would be a real dagger of a turnover if it stands. And yeah, I think they're going to. I think it will. Uh, you know, he, he was stretching out. You know, and RJ, it's so hard. It's it's the it's the it's the perfect example of mental toughness of an athlete. You want to make the play so bad, you want to stretch to get the extra yardage, and you have to realize that it's more a risk to do that. That it's unnecessary risk, uh, even though it seems like you're trying even harder to to be great. Boy, how do you know though in a situation like that and 
The ball hit the shin of Wes Sutton, who is the leading tackler on Montreal, but inadvertently basically creates a fumble. Yep. Yep, you got to you got to learn to not do that and and you have to learn you have to learn how important the priority of ball security is and that just ended Probably not actually yet, you know, I mean, <laughs> if 40, 50, 40, uh, 57 seconds can last a long time, but you know, now you've, now you've made, now you've lowered the, the probability of a win substantially. Trevor Harris, you'd have to think Montreal wants to keep this on the ground. They do hand off to Walter Fletcher and the Tiger Cats defense gets a stop. Jovan Santos Knox was in there quickly, as was Ted Laurent. So that limits the gain on first down, and that will make things a little more interesting for Montreal on second down. DeAndre Smith had not been targeted in the game, and Tiger Cats went to him from the three-yard line for a touchdown in the end zone. And then they go back to him here, and he tries to stretch it into more and winds up fumbling and Montreal recovers. 52 seconds on the clock. It's a second and nine for Montreal from their own 49. Trevor Harris, he'll hand it off again. Fletcher goes straight ahead. Cariel Brooks makes the tackle. He's very close to a first down. Montreal says they have it. Tiger Cats think they've stopped them. Let's see where this ball is being spotted. Trevor Harris is trying to look from the first down marker to where the ball is. So it's either a first down for Montreal or a third in inches. 47 seconds still on the clock. And obviously it stopped now as they're gonna measure. I, I do think they're gonna be a little bit short here. Well. If that far marker is correct, you're right, Luke, it is inches. So 47 seconds on the clock. It's third and inches. Eugene Lewis preaching to Danny Machocha that this is no problem. Machocha has a bit of a decision here. Mm -hmm. This is hard should be able to get third in inches. However, if they don't, Tiger Cats will get the ball close to midfield. Well, Trevor Harris is still on the field. Which is rare, you're right, Luke. Usually it's Dominic Davis. Fletcher in the first half had three yards rushing. In the second half, 42 yards. So they're gonna let this clock run out. They'll probably, they may even take, well, Trevor Harris is getting ready to take the timeout. Okay, so they're, they, they, got a, they got to kill a free 10 seconds there. So taking the clock down to 28 seconds, Dominic Davis is coming in now. Hamilton sends their heavy personnel out on the field for this short yardage. This would be an incredible stop. They have get. to get it though, don't they, Luke? Otherwise... Oh, uh, they do. Oh, absolutely. This is the game right here. You've got to make this stop, and then you get. And then if you do, Dane Evans still has to... Has to move the ball 55 yards in what will end up being, you know, 25 seconds. They dig in. Dominic Davis under center, dives ahead, and he will get the first down. Dove almost to the Hamilton 50. So the Montreal Alouettes did not lead until the fourth quarter. Eugene Lewis Couple of touchdowns in the second half. He just continues to torment the Tiger Cats. And for second place in the East Division, this is a heartbreaking one for Hamilton. Turnovers cost them again. The clock is running. Trevor Harris under center. Seven seconds on the play clock. He'll take another knee. And Trevor Harris now playing to the crowd in Montreal. Alouettes know this is a big game for them. Would have been tied for second place 
with Hamilton had they lost. Now they still have visions of first place in the East Division. They take two out of three against the Tiger Cats. This game is over. The Alouettes win it 23 to 16. They did not lead until the fourth quarter, but they got that lead and were able to get the victory. Time now for the Access Storage recap of the game. Score a touchdown with affordable storage. Access Storage has flexible storage solutions at a store near you. Try four weeks free. Details at accessstorage.ca. Luke, for the most part, it was a close game, but those mistakes haunt the Tiger Cats again. Yeah, so obvious right in front of you, but it is, and it is heartbreaking because there was a lot of the good that started in the Winnipeg game, a lot of that continued. Very impressed with Dane Evans. I thought he played a very good game. Even the throws that were missed, I thought he had them right on the money. No interceptions there. Really impressive offensive line play. But I think as a, as a whole, the receiving group, didn't. this was not their best performance of the year. I think you saw a lot of drops that, that, that should have been caught. caught. Um, of course, the fumble at the end from Keandre Smith that really kind of ended the, the, the Ticats' chance to, to make this comeback happen. Um, a couple big plays by Trevor Harris and his group. You got to hand it to them. Um, though I didn't think the Ticat defense was was um, uh, really the, the main issue uh, there. They made their plays at times too. And also, uh, the, the penalties were egregious against the Ticats tonight and just damaging time and again. The second half was just full of them. Um, and you do that sort of balances out with that huge pass interference in the Ticats favor that led to that touchdown drive in the fourth quarter but still just way way too many penalties there uh, from the Tiger Cats and then of course you've got a negative two turnover ratio and, and, and yep. if there's anything that we've learned from this <laughs> season is that it's very very difficult to win uh, with a negative two turnover ratio uh, yep. so close but the, the truth is, RJ, the must wins are, are are coming, my friend. Okay. Oh, baby, they're coming. Finally. Now second place in the East has two wins on you. And now it just got much, the, the, the tunnel just got much farther and uh, the mountain got higher and everything's harder now for the Ticats, unfortunately. Um, and just a couple mistakes here and there, this, this was a very winnable game for them. So the Alouettes are now four points ahead of the Tiger Cats for second spot in the East and two points behind Toronto for top spot in the East. So the Alouettes get a big victory. The Tiger Cats enter a bye week and then they will have another crucial game. That will be at Tim Hortons Field on October the 7th. That's a Friday and it's against Saskatchewan who at this point looked like the team that would cross over from the West Division. So that would be in the must-win category for the Tiger Cats. They fail to win back-to-back -back games. They haven't been able to do that this season. The final score in Montreal, the Alouettes 23, the Tiger Cats 16. Tiger Cats postgame with Bubba O'Neill and Andy Fantuz is coming up next for our executive producer, Peter McEwen, our technical operator, Michael Steyer, our statistician, Jeff Giardat, and for Luke Tasker, I'm R.J. Broadhead. Thanks for listening to Hamilton Tiger Cats football on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Tiger Cats Audio Network.